Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter by adding a couple optional scripts. So if there's anything in this video that you don't want to add, it's not going to be a big deal and won't affect the game going forward. So what we're going to add in this video is shift to sprint and also the ability to see your hand when you have the gun. So that's what it's going to look like for your hand. And then for shift to sprint, you can just press the shift button to go faster. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the two scripts we're gonna work on today are gonna to be a shift to sprint and something that makes the arms appear. Both those scripts are gonna be in the starter player scripts and I renamed them to sprint and arms just to keep them separated. We're gonna go ahead and start with the shift to sprint. So for this script, we're gonna start by making a variable for the user input service. So we're gonna say local user input, and this is gonna be equal to game, colon, get service. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna put user input service. After that, we're gonna make a variable for the local player, so we'll say local player, and this is gonna be equal to game dot players dot local player. Then we're gonna define two variables. One is gonna be the sprint speed and the other one is gonna be the walk speed. So we'll say local sprint speed. This is gonna be equal to whatever value you want for the sprint speed. So the default is 16. So we're just gonna choose something bigger than 16. I'm gonna try 30. And then we're gonna define another one for the walk speed. So we'll say local walk speed. And this is gonna be equal to the default, which is 16. Next, we're gonna be making two different functions, one for when the shift key is being pressed and one for when the shift key is being released. So we'll start by saying local function. The name of this function is gonna be begin sprint. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna pass two different parameters. We're gonna put input and also game processed. Inside this function, we're gonna start by saying if not game processed. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say if input dot user input. And we're going to say if this is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard. So what this line right here is doing, it's checking to see whatever input was received. It's checking to make sure that was from the keyboard. If it was from the keyboard, then we need to check which key was pressed. And we'll do that by saying local key code. And this is gonna be equal to input dot key code. We'll say if key code is equal to enum dot key code. So all enum means is just choosing from a list. So there's a bunch of different key codes so by saying enum.keycode, it's basically just pulling it from the list. And then from the list, we can just say whichever key we want to check for. We're going to be checking for left shift. So I'm going to say dot and then left shift. Okay, so if we have a left shift being pressed, then what we're going to do is say speed. And we're gonna set that equal to our sprint speed. Okay, so since the next part is gonna be very similar to this function, let's go ahead and just copy it. And we'll paste it down below. So now instead of begin sprint, we'll just change it to end sprint. And then here, instead of setting it to the sprint speed, we're going to change it to the walk speed. And finally, down here at the bottom, we wanna connect these two different functions to the events. So we'll say user input dot input begin we're going to connect this with our first function which is called begin sprint and then finally we'll say user input dot input ended colon connect and here we're going to connect this one with end sprint all right and that should be it so let's go and run the game and we'll check it out all right, so now that I'm in the game, I'll go ahead and check it out. So if I press shift, I notice that it's not working. So let's go and check out the output. 
So here it says user input is not a valid member of input object. So it's happening on this line right here. Oh, so right here, this should be user input type. And let's go and change it up top too. All right, so let's go and run it again and see if that fixes it. All right, so now if I press the shift button, it sprints. And as soon as I release, it goes back to the normal walk speed. All right, before we get started with the arms, I just want to give you a fair warning that it's not perfect and there's still a few things I need to work on. This was one of the easier methods I found to do this. Most of the other methods involve creating an extra pair of arms and then attaching it to the body. I will attach that article if you want to take a look at it. So if you take a look at this article here, the process that looks a little bit better involves making an extra pair of arms and then attaching it to the body. So if you want to read through this and kind of do it that way, you're welcome to. I'm just going to show you the easier method for now, and then I'll continue to work on making it better. So the one we have now looks like this, so it's not too bad. One issue though, if you look down, the arm kind of looks disconnected from the body, so that's one thing I still need to work on. So in general, what I want to work on is making the gun follow the mouse instead of just the head. But for now, I'll show you what I have, and you can decide if you want to add it or not. Okay, so this script is also going to be in the starter player scripts. For this script, we're going to start by saying local player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players dot local player. Next, we'll say local model. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace. And then we're going to say colon wait for child. And then what we're looking for is player dot name. This will get the player's model in the workspace so that we can take different things like their arm and their hand. What we're going to do next is create a couple of variables for some different body parts that we want to show. So first we're going to say local right lower. So this is going to be the lower right arm. And this is going to be equal to model colon find first child. And then what we're looking for is right lower arm. I'm just going to copy this two more times and we'll change what we need to. So the next one is going to be the upper part of the arm. So here we'll say right upper arm. And then the last thing is going to be the hand. So we'll put hand here. And on this side we'll say right hand. After that we're going to say game colon get service. Inside the parentheses we're going to put run service. And then we're going to say dot render stepped. And then we're going to say colon connect. And then we're going to connect this with a function. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying right and then lower. We're going to say dot and then local transparency. And then after transparency, it's going to be modifier. And we're going to set this equal to zero. So what this local transparency modifier does is when you're zoomed into first person all the way, it makes any body parts invisible. So by setting the transparency modifier equal to zero, it kind of overrides that and makes it visible. And the reason we have to do this, the render stepped, is so that it renders it for each frame of the game. All right, so let's just go and copy this two more times and we'll make the changes that we need to make. So here we're going to say right upper. And for the last one, it's going to be right hand. All right, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and check it out and make sure it works. Okay, and you can see when I zoom in, I can see my hand, my lower arm, and my upper arm. And like I mentioned before, if you look all the way down, it's disconnected. But for now, I think it's a decent start and I can work on fixing the other issues. And just to give you a better idea of how this works, I removed the upper arm and the lower arm. And if we run the code now, we should just see the hand. So now we can just see the hand. So whatever body parts you mention are the ones that are going to show up. If you want to see the other arm, then you can make variables for the left hand, the left upper arm, and left lower arm. And then it would show up too. For now, I'm just going to keep the right hand since the player has a handgun. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. These were just a couple optional scripts that you can add to your game if you want to. In the next video, we're going to take a look and see how we can drop ammo out of a player that dies. 
So I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.